Armstrong from Forever Family Animal Hospital. Thank you for tuning in today. So today we're gonna to talk to you about urine. So um, even though that sounds um, gross and something we deal with every day, it's really important. And a lot of times when we do annual blood work, sometimes urine gets left off the list, but it's actually really important to do a urinalysis at least once a year on all of our dog and cat friends um, to make sure that they're healthy, that there's no signs of urinary tract infection, cancers, that the pH is good, um, all of that stuff. And it also helps me interpret their blood work. So when I look at things like their kidney function, I kind of want to go back and look at the urine and I can kind of compare the two and make a more clear thought process for them. So urine is really important. Uh, I do recommend if you're able to at home to catch some urine samples on your dogs or cats. Cats are a little trickier to do um, to get one in the litter box. But dogs, if you can catch a little urine sample at home, put it in a Tupperware uh, and then bring it to your vet in the morning for their appointment, that helps us, kind of cuts down on your weight and the um, trouble of getting a urine sample. So ask your vet about that. So today we're gonna talk about how we do urine tests um, what that entails, our different methods for collection. So let's start with collection. So today um, we're gonna talk about um, free catching. So free catch just means that they squat and pee or lift their leg and pee. Um, and we usually use um, a little ladle like this or a big ladle like this and try to catch it when we're walking them outside. We also use our vaccine trays. So veterinarians are awesome at repurposing stuff. So the trays that carry the vaccines are kind of nice and shallow and we kind of slide those underneath too when they're peeing. Um, and then we pull that up with a syringe to run our urine sample. Now some dogs are really scared. They're not willing to give us a urine sample. Uh, and then in those cases, we can either um, pass a urinary catheter on them for especially for the boys, or we can use a needle to pull it out of their bladder. That's called a cystocentesis, okay? So we have some different methods for collecting the urine. Um, and we're gonna talk about what we do with it. So I have a urine sample over here. Um, so what we do is we, we look at the urine grossly. Does it look healthy? Is it bloody? Is it cloudy? So this one's um, pale yellow, clear. So that looks like some pretty healthy urine. So my next step is gonna be to use like the little dipstick here. So the little dipstick has um, 11 different squares on it. And they're each gonna correspond with a reading on here. Okay, so, and they tell us like how many seconds and stuff it needs to be on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start um, with my leukocyte square, which is this one. That's a fancy word for white blood cell. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put one drop of my patient's urine on my leukocyte square. Okay, I'm gonna wait a few seconds and then I'm gonna do the rest of the strip. So what we're doing is we're gonna put one drop of urine on each square and then we compare them to our chart here with all the colors. And this is gonna tell me, you know, blood, if there's bilirubin in it, urobilogen, ketones, protein, you name it. So we're gonna look at all of these things on here and um, determine whether or not this urine looks healthy or not. Okay, so I'm gonna put one drop on the rest of these. And it's okay if they run together a little bit. Okay, so then I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds. So while I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm gonna use something called the refractometer. So the refractometer is a really cool, simple piece of equipment. And what we do is we're gonna pull this up, we're gonna put a drop of urine on here. And then I close this, and when I close it, it kinda lays flush with the urine right there. So then we look at this um, into the light and under the focus, and this is gonna tell me the specific gravity of the urine. So specific gravity is how concentrated the urine is. So this patient is 1.022, or we call that 1022. So that's kind of between concentrated and um, not concentrated. It's kind of in the middle there. So um, I would expect this patient to either be very well hydrated or having some early kidney problems. Okay, so that's why the specific gravity is so important, it tells me the kidneys function or ability to concentrate the urine. Okay, so now I think about 30 seconds has been up. So we're gonna go ahead and look at our stick. 
Okay, so I kind of tap the yarn off and then I'm gonna hold it up to my squares. So compensation pad is just kind of, you know, how's the color looking? Looks like we're negative for blood. We're negative for Billy Rubin. It looks like maybe we have the one of Euro Bilinogen. We've got the ketones negative, the protein is negative, nitrites are negative, glucose is negative, the pH looks like it's about six. Okay, so a little bit on the um, acidic side, but fairly close to seven, which is neutral. We kind of skip the specific gravity on here because I don't feel like it's accurate. The leukocytes look like they might be trace. Okay, so it's not quite as pale as the negative. It looks like it fits with the trace. And then the ascorbic acid is the vitamin C and that's gonna be at 10. Okay, so we record all of these. Um, my concern would be, hey, maybe there are some trace white blood cells in there. And that's where the spin down is super important. So we're actually gonna take the urine, we're gonna spin it down in the centrifuge and we're gonna look at it under the microscope and see if those white blood cells are actually there or if maybe um, our strip isn't as accurate as we were hoping. So to spin it down, we're gonna take some of our urine and put it in a, in a tube. Okay, so I'm squirting some in here. We always try to save some of our urine, especially if it was a sterile sample from a catheter or a cystocentesis in case we wanna culture it. So urine cultures are very helpful in determining which bacteria are present and what numbers, what are they sensitive to antibiotic wise. So cultures can also be super helpful um, if we need them. So here's our urine. We're gonna walk over here to the centrifuge. So this is our centrifuge. And um, the important thing about using a centrifuge is making sure it's balanced. So um, here we have another tube with some water in it. And I made them roughly the same amount. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect but it needs to be um, an approximate equal volume. So I'm gonna put this one on that side and this one directly across from it so it's nice and balanced and it's happy when it's spinning down. So we're gonna close this. I'm gonna spin this at um, 3,000 um, or 30,000 RPMs and we're gonna do it for five minutes, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and hit run while the centrifuge is spinning that urine down and it's gonna pull any red blood cells, white blood cells, crystals, debris to the bottom of the tube, um, and it's gonna leave a supernate on the top. So we're gonna take a look at that in about five minutes. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so we have our um, centrifuge all done. So it's fun for five minutes at um, 30,000 RPMs. And we're going to um, pull out our tubes. So again, we have um, water on one side and urine on the other to balance themselves out. So when we spin down urine, what we do is we look for what we call a pellet. Um, so it may be kind of hard to see um, at first, but if you look right here, there's a tiny little fuzzy white patch on this bottom tip right here. So that is considered significant. That is considered a pellet. Sometimes we spin urine down and there is no pellet, which is good. That's what we want. Um, but when we see something like this, what we're going to do is take a really good look at that under the microscope and decide, um, is that mucus, is it white blood cells, crystals, bacteria, what are we looking at here? And then when we look at that, the important thing is to keep in mind how we got our sample and who our sample is from as well. So um, if it was a free catch, you know, sometimes there's bacteria. Um, in the sample and that's okay in low numbers, but if there's a lot of white blood cells present then that could indicate that there actually is an infection um, because you know there's not white blood cells lying in our um, our catching uh, objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our um, pellet to take a look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a microscope slide. Okay, these are glass and then we have a stain here. So what we do is I basically wanna take a look at this pellet. I'm not really that interested in the rest of this clear stuff on top called the supernate. So I'm gonna take my pipette and I'm gonna pull out most of the urine because I'm really only interested in that pellet. Okay, so I need to find my little pellet, keep an eye on it. I kinda of wanna keep it intact for right now. Okay, so now I have just a little bit of urine left in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resuspend that pellet in the little bit of urine that I left. So we're gonna mix it up a little bit and I'm gonna put two drops on here. So I'm gonna do one drop over here and then I'm gonna do another drop over here, okay? Now, and then I'm, I'm done with this too, so I'm gonna ditch that. Okay, 
So we have um, sediment stain, which is gonna help me stain the white blood cells and the bacteria to look at under the microscope. So I like to do one stained and one unstained side so I can look at them. So I'm gonna do one drop of my stain. And we try not to touch the urine sample because we don't wanna contaminate our little bottle. And then I kind of swirl that in with my pipette. We're done with the pipette. And then we take these little glass um, cover slips here. So I want the little ones. So I'm going to pull these out. And then these kind of will just lay on top of my samples. Okay, just like that. So we've got a stain and an unstained side. Okay. So now I have my sample, and we're gonna go over to the microscope, okay, which is right here. We have a super cool um, new microscope that has a tablet that hooks up to it, so I can um, look at some really cool things under the microscope, bacteria, yeast, Demodex, mange, you name it, and I can show my clients on the tablet, because sometimes it's hard to see through the microscope. So I'm gonna pause video for just a few minutes while I take a look at this urine and then we're gonna go over the cool findings. Um. Hey guys, all right, welcome back. So we have our urine spun down. We had it put on the microscope slide. We added the stain to one side and then we have an unstained side. So we bring it to the microscope. We take a look around. We look at the unstained, the stained. Sometimes we zoom in on things that we wanna see a little bit closer up. So um, this patient has um, some really cool, beautiful looking crystals um, in the urine. And these are called bilirubin crystals. So we've used the oil, gone up to the highest magnification. And on our tablet, you can kind of see them. They're really spiky little um, crystals. I don't know if you can see it all through the eyepiece on the camera. Um, we can try that. Um, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Um, wow, see how cool those look um, into the microscope. It's way clearer um, with your own eye in person, um, but you can kind of see the difference there. Um, so there's some crystals in this urine, and then I'm gonna find another spot another spot where there was, um, so there we go, I, I focused a little bit better, so now you can look through again, um, and you can see all these little shards. So those are like little pieces of glass, and they can cause irritation to the um, bladder lining, okay? So those are called crystals. And there's different kinds of crystals, um, for different kinds of conditions and pHs. So, um, let's see here. Okay. So here's an area too where we look at um, on here and there's little tiny purple dots everywhere. So those are called cocci. So we look at different kinds of bacteria. There's cocci, which are round shaped, and rods, which are like cigar shaped. So this patient has a lot of cocci or really tiny little purple dots everywhere. We expect to see that on a free catch sample, you know, because the environment is full of bacteria. Um, but this patient has maybe more than we would expect to see. There's also some larger purple cells, those are called white blood cells, and we're seeing those um, occasionally throughout the sample as well. So it is normal to have some white blood cells in your urine, um, but when we have clinical signs, a lot of bacteria, and maybe more white blood cells than we would expect then we would ask um, for a culture or to start uh, antibiotic therapy. So this is kind of um, a urinalysis in a nutshell. Um, we went over how to do the strip, how to use the refractometer, and how we look at the sediment under the microscope. It is kind of a time-consuming test um, for your veterinarian to run. We also send these out to a reference lab as well, um, but really cool, really important. Um, and I'm really glad that you guys were able to tune in and uh, view this with me. If you have any pet questions, please feel free to email us at askthevet.ffah at gmail.com. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to answer them. And uh, we would love to see you guys at Forever Family Animal Hospital in Maitland, Florida. Thanks and have a great weekend.